Do you know that effective communication is essential to succeeding in your relationships, especially in marriage? Join me today in this video as we explore effective communication and the issues that could lead to communication breakdown in marriage. Our relationships, leadership, and career goals, and how we achieve them, sets the stage for everything else in life. Get these right, and the trajectory of your life changes positively. Welcome to the platform where I help make your life experience way better, improving your overall quality of life, helping you navigate your relationship hurdles, inspiring leaders to make positive impact providing tools and solutions for career advancement and creating the life you have always wanted. Aren't you excited about that? Because I am. Today is my first part series on creating fulfilling relationships, focusing on effective communication in marriage. So let's dive in. I should start by saying, for any relationship to work, it requires all parties being committed. What does that mean? It means everyone willing to put in the required effort and hard work. Let me not scare you, but building impactful relationship takes work, hard work, and a lot of effort as well. I guess you know there's so many factors that make up effective relationships. People call them secrets to great relationships or marriage. People call it a partnership. I've even heard of people saying, for a marriage to work, one of them should be blind and another deaf. Isn't that so funny? However, that works for some people and that's okay. In reality, the list is actually exhaustive. You could say communication is a tool, tolerance, patience, love, and so on. But we're going to focus on communication. Communication applies to pretty much all facets of our lives. Specific to relationships, relationship is one of the fundamentals for it to be successful. Some people may argue that intimacy is the building block, while others say communication is. Well, in my opinion, I believe communication is the foundation for intimacy. It requires communication to hold it together. If that falls apart, then everything falls apart. And when I talk about intimacy, I mean being able to connect on a deeper level where we create an atmosphere of trust, where both spouses are actually vulnerable. We can talk about anything. We can be anyone you wanna be in a safe environment, a place of love. That's what we're talking about. Effective communication is a process of sharing yourself, both verbally and non-verbally, in such a way that your spouse understands and accepts everything. It doesn't mean that he agrees on it, however, you can share it and it's okay. The main thing is creating a space where both parties can express themselves without any fear of retribution. You have trust, you have built trust. And that is vital. Do you know that studies have shown that com couples who communicate effectively communicate frequently and they also have a more satisfying relationship? Couples who achieve deeper level of communication enjoy the most satisfaction of all. I guess you will be excited about that. Marriage requires communicating. It doesn't matter when you're happy, sad, disappointed, excited, whatever the emotion, you should be able to talk about it. Let me pose a question to you. Is communication a strength in your marriage or a weakness? Do you and your spouse connect on a deeper level? If it is a weakness, then you need to work on that. However, the choice is yours. You have to be intentional again. Then I ask, when we talk about communication, are you actively listening? Are you clarifying? Are you, are you communicating to understand? Are you listening to understand or rather just to respond? Personally, I must say, 
I thought I could actually talk seriously. I've been married for so many years and I will say to a type A male. It got to a point where I was just totally fed up. You know, I was struggling. I try to always push my point across. I try to, you know, express myself. However, it, did, it just didn't work. My walls came up. But what was interesting was I, I, I felt misunderstood, unappreciated. I felt I wasn't acknowledged. And when I had this conversation with my husband, he felt the same way. And then I sat back to think, so you mean that you were also not able to come connect with me on a deeper level? And yes, it was interesting that. At times where you have so many issues, you try to talk, at times you talk over each other, so many things that happen. You end up leaving things on the surface and then you get, you, you get swept under the carpet. And it gets to a point where the carpet gets so high and uh, <laughs> you, can't even, you can't even step on it anymore. And at times, you find that people even get divorced. How can we salvage this? How can we change? How can we ensure that our marriage doesn't become the statistics that we see in the papers and in the news? It takes commitment. It takes effort. And I will say commitment in, in that your plan B is actually your plan A. So you are all in. Are you actually all in? Is it all about the happily ever after? All the stuff we see in the romantic movies? The choice is ours. Is ours. We can make our relationship the fairy tale we've always wanted. We may need to retrain ourselves, or learn some habits, and relearn some things as well to ensure that our relationships are successful. When our communication is put to the test, is actually during conflict. That's when you're sure, or you can actually be sure that you're communicating effectively. You need to understand the temperaments of your spouse so you can carry them along. When is the right time to speak? When exactly are you meant to say the words you're meant to say and how do you put the words together? They mean a lot. That could actually determine whether he or she understands you or misunderstands you as well. So that is very, very important. Do you realize that at times that you may be correct, you may be right. You may have, you know, the right words at the time, but your tone could be off. Voices could be raised and that's a no-no. Once that happens, the walls are up. You're no longer even hearing each other. That applies to me. So we need to watch to be, to be sure that we are working towards the same goal. Remember, marriage is about teamwork. It's not a competition. You complement each other. That's a mindset you have to have. That you communicate with empathy, you communicate with love. You need to speak intentionally, focusing on what the issues actually are. Use those great words. Be um, loving as well when you do that so you can connect on a deeper level. I'm just gonna to touch on some of the biggest issues relating to poor communication. They include bottling up of feelings instead of actually talking about them, the tone of our voice, you know, being angry or rude, nagging, ignoring each other, being passive aggressive, those behaviors that are like so bad, being even distracted. You can imagine how bad it is when you're having a conversation and someone is on their phone or a device, making assumptions, feeling unheard, not following through on, on conversations, arguing to win instead of focusing on the problems, name calling, foul language, texting, you know what, it, talking over each other. At times you're meant to be talking to each other and then the other person goes to work and you're texting each other. The list of despair is unending and we know these issues. We can fix them and we will. Stay tuned to subs for subsequent videos where we'll definitely explore the steps to help you build up an effective communication in your marriage. I will end this particular video with a quote by Tony Gasking. It says, communication to a relationship is like oxygen to life. Without communication, it dies. I hope you enjoyed this video today. So don't forget to subscribe 
share with your friends, and be kind to one another. For now, stay safe, focus on love, focus on your spouse, be kind to one another, and I can't wait to see you on my next video. Thank you so much and have yourself a great day. Thank you.